Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's uh, still a cold and chilly day here at Aoyama Park. I decided to try to make a, at least a couple of videos today because we have a busy weekend ahead of us and I'm probably not going to have uh, any time to make any videos until after the weekend. And I really wanted to make a video about this particular camera. And those of you who are looking at it right now, uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, cameras and photography will immediately recognize this as a Hasselblad, a 6x6 medium format camera which can use a variety of larger films, uh, uh, 120 film, 220 film, or 70mm uh, film depending on the kind of back which you have uh, on the camera. Uh, it's a little bit similar to the uh, Mamiya RB67 a camera which I did a video about a few days ago, but much lighter, more compact, and I guess a more elegant camera. Uh, there aren't many cameras which you can call elegant, but uh, the Hasselblad is certainly one of those. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy this Hasselblad or another vintage Japanese or uh, uh, not Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So this particular Hasselblad is a uh, 500CM, which is one of the most popular of the Hasselblad line. There are a lot of different 500 series cameras made. Uh, this is the, pretty much the basic uh, example of a 500 series Hasselblad camera. Uh, very much a modular camera like the RB67 made up of the same basic components, but in a smaller, uh, cleaner uh, profile. And also uh, a little lighter and easier to use and a little bit more convenient for handheld shooting. Though uh, this camera is primarily uh, designed for use in the studio. Uh, I, I really love the clean lines of this camera, the, the chrome plating and uh, the wonderful curves and stuff. It's very much like a, something like an old 1950s American car. Though uh, I guess the European designers would probably be offended if I said something like that. But I, I, I like the design of the camera. It's very beautiful to look at and it's also very beautiful to use. Uh, the most common version was this kind of uh, one with a uh, film winding, either a knob or a pop-out uh, winding arm like this, which could be added to the other cameras. Uh, they had a a system where you could attach a light meter to the camera. I have one of these Hasselblad light meters uh, in my closet. I should have brought it out to put it on here to show how it works, but you can clip it onto the outside of the camera and it allows you to have something like a, it works kind of like a handheld meter, but which is attached to the camera. Uh, very wonderful. I really love the feel of these cameras. I've had a couple of Hasselblads in the past, uh, which I like to go out and shoot with. Uh, and. But I, you know, when it comes to shooting the larger formats, I, I sometimes, you know, I'm kind of crazy in that. Uh, uh, sometimes I, 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 I go all out. Say, well, you know, if, if the Hasselblad, you know, takes really good pictures, my Graflex, you know, four x five camera will do even better. And so uh, I, I've probably done more shooting with my Graflex and with my old Hasselblads, but still, uh, they're a real pleasure. Uh, my first uh, time seeing a Hasselblad was uh, years and years ago when I was a, a student and I was uh, going to college in New Mexico. And I, I went up to the Sandia Crest to take photographs with my Nikon F3. And I was really proud of that camera because it was quite a nice and expensive camera in those days. More than I can actually afford. I shouldn't have spent that kind of money for it. And I was up there and there were a lot of photographers up there. and. Uh, and we were kind of like comparing cameras and then someone came up with a Hasselblad and set it up and then some guy next to me says uh, here we are showing off about our you know our 35 millimeter cameras and up has to come a Hasselblad to put us on our place yeah uh, uh, but yeah it's definitely uh, uh, one of those kind of cameras which stands out uh, not only for its design and its ease of operation but also just because it takes really wonderful pictures uh, this particular one is fitted with a sonar, a uh, 150mm f4 uh, lens. And this is kind of a, a slight telephoto lens. It's a little bit longer than a normal lens, normal lens for medium format. Mamiya considers like the best portrait lens to be a 127mm. That's their most popular one and the one which they use for things like passport and ID photos and things like that. Uh, the good thing about the slightly longer lenses is they don't exaggerate perspective when you're shooting people. So if you're shooting models or things like that, you know, if you're shooting wider lenses and the closer you get, the more it kind of distorts uh, people that makes their noses look bigger or 
if they're standing, you're taking a picture of, say, two people and one is in front of the other, the head on the person who's closest to you suddenly gets much bigger than the head of the per on the person behind. Whereas if you're using a lens like this and you have the people standing back a little bit, everything looks right. So uh, this is a pretty good uh, camera for portraiture. The, the, cam the lens you usually expect to see on these cameras is the 80mm uh, f2.8 planar, which is one of my favorite lenses. And, uh, uh, the one which I usually used on one of these cameras. Uh, they also had a 100 millimeter, I think it was an f3.5 planar. I've seen those, but I haven't actually owned one of those yet. Uh, there were some uh, wide angle lenses, pretty much a large variety of lenses made to fit on the Hasselblad camera. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the features, controls, functions, and how to use the Hasselblad camera. I'm not going to disassemble it so much like I did with the uh, 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 Mamiya yesterday. I think this camera is a little bit simpler and I think uh, you know, I don't have to explain it in that kind of detail But hopefully uh, what I do explain will let you understand how it works and how to use it So on the top of the camera you have the viewfinder here and it just pops open like so and it's a waist level finder uh, just like what we had in the uh, uh, Mamiya camera and there's a, a pop-up focusing loop located on the inside here if I can get it to pop up and that allows you to uh, magnify the focusing screen. And uh, you can see, see it's a square uh, lens on this camera. It's, it's kind of round underneath, but this is a six by six format camera. They had other formats available with different film backs, but uh, six by six is the standard format, just like a TLR camera. And just fold it down. It's a little bit more difficult to fold than the Mamiya RB67 because you have to put down the parts individually. But uh, that makes everything fit into a smaller, more compact package and makes the overall camera uh, a little smaller. On the right side here, we have the film winding lever. And the camera you have may not have this kind of winding lever on it. It may have a knob on the side. Uh, you can add one of these levers. You can find them on eBay or other places and, uh, and put it on. I think it makes the camera work a little bit more quickly and a little bit more cleanly. Uh, below that, we have a mirror lockup button. So when you're uh, operating the camera, uh, you can lock up the uh, mirror and then take the photograph and that uh, eliminates some of the vibration in the camera. Uh, some people think that the Hasselblad cameras vibrates a little bit much from the mirror slap when you're operating it. Uh, on the bottom here, we have a couple of uh, indicators here and these kind of warn you when the camera is uh, ready to fire and when it's not ready to fire when it's ready to fire these windows should be clear when it's not ready to fire they'll be red so uh you just wind the film until they show clear and the camera is ready to go on the back here we have a second winding knob and this is for winding the film inside the film back uh, this is a 12 exposure back. Uh, they have other uh, backs so for, uh, like if it's a 6x5 format, it'd be like a 16 exposure back. And uh, they also the 70 millimeter back and the 8, but the 12 back is the is the one which is the most popular and this is the one I recommend to get with the camera if, you, if you're shopping for one of these. Uh, the 220, 220 film, 220 roll film backs a little bit uh, uh, the film backs aren't hard to find but 220 roll film is a little bit harder to find than 120 it just uh, this back is uh, it's normally called the a12 back so if you're shopping for one of these just make sure it has the a12 back located on the back here on the side uh, on the back of the camera we have a reminder indicator uh, there's a little place where you can put a film card on the inside and then you can just uh, kind of turn the dial here to remind you what you have set in the camera on the front of the camera, we have the shutter release button on this side, and we have the lens release button on this side. Uh, on the bottom of the camera, we have a couple of different sockets. We have a three socket and a quarter inch socket, and this is dovetailed on the bottom to add a uh, uh, grip or uh, other accessories, a uh, tripod mounting shoe or something like that. Uh, Hasselblad uh, had a variety of accessories which fit on these old cameras. Uh, right here we have the uh, dark slide, which you have to uh, remove and replace uh, when you are uh, going to shoot the camera or remove the film back. And this is the release for uh, removing the film, I guess, cartridge from the film back, which you have to do when you load the film. Uh, to operate the camera, uh, you simply wind it like so. Uh, to take a photograph, you have to pull out the dark side. If you don't pull it out, you can't take a photograph. And a lot of people who uh, first get into using one of these cameras like I did myself you kind of mix up the steps sometimes and uh, and you have to fumble around a little bit but uh, when you take uh, this out uh, you can fire the shutter like so and then wind it up to the next speed or wind it up to the next frame uh, to remove the the back for uh, film loading of course just like the Mamiya you have to make sure that you put the 
dark slide back in or uh, the film back won't come out and that's of course to prevent you from exposing your uh, film. So one thing which really annoys me about the Hasselblad though is the design of this dark slide. Uh, I'll go ahead and describe why. It's just a piece of stainless steel which is bent over around this little handle which you use to pull it in and out. But you have to be careful to put this in the right way. You can insert it either way and it will go in, but for it to work right you have to make sure that this raised lip, as you can see, it's higher here where it fits around this handle and it's flat here. You have to make sure that that's uh, set so the, the rounded part is facing toward the front of the camera. Uh, if you don't, it makes it hard to put the uh, film cartridge in and out of the camera. It kind of catches on this lip if it's not put in the right way, so keep that in mind. Uh, the film back comes off the camera quite easily. If you have the slide pushed in, simply push the lever on the top here and it comes off like so. On the back here you can see a light baffle and this, uh, this closes to allow you to uh, replace the lenses without having to replace the dark slide in the film back though I would recommend you do that anyway because on some of these old Hasselblad cameras these doors don't close all the way they don't close fully and light can leak past it uh, it's not that difficult to, to straighten them back into shape but um, uh, these are expensive cameras so if you have something like that I'd probably recommend taking it to some place to, to get it fixed properly uh, you know, uh, the first uh, one of these cameras I got, I, I mangled up a little bit, unfortunately, but that was back in the day when they, they weren't as expensive as they are nowadays, and getting the replacement parts in those days was also easier. Uh, to put it back on, you have to make sure that this button is on the top. We have a couple of holes here on the bottom, and they catch on here like so, and it goes like that. Uh, to remove the lens, you make sure that the camera is wound and simply push this button and turn the lens and then you can see the reflex lens and stuff. The reason it has to be the, it has to be charged is when you are uh, cocking the shutter, uh, the cocking uh, lever here or pin or bushing or whatever you want to call it, has a slot across it and when the shutter fires, the slot turns vertically and it won't engage this, the, you know, this, uh, I guess, the tip of this not, I can't call this a slot, whatever is the opposite of a slot, uh, it won't engage. So you have to make sure that the shutter is charged. Uh, sometimes you'll have the shutter charged in the camera, but this won't be charged here. It'll be in the wrong position, like when you're trying to change lenses. You can just use a coin or something and turn it so that it's, you know, you can see the arrow telling you which way to turn it in case you find one of these lenses where it isn't lined up the way it should be. And then you can mount the lens on the camera. Uh, people who are new to Hasselblads or maybe you've come across your dad or your grandfather or uncle's camera and it has a couple of lenses in the bag and you can't get them to go on, uh, that's going to be what the problem is. To put the lens on, you line up the red mark with the red mark on the top here and just turn it until it clicks into place. Uh, on the lens here we have the we have a ring on the bottom and this is just to give you leverage to remove then replace the lens. Next thing we have here is the focusing ring. We have a flash sync socket located here on the left side. We have a switch here between uh, self timer, X sync and manual. And then we have the uh, uh, shutter speed ring. And it's, if you notice, as I'm turning the shutter speed ring, it's kind of a combination of things here. You can kind of, uh, you have to adjust these uh, two different things separately. It's kind of like the old, the, thing, the system which I complain about a lot on the Konica 3A, the EV interlock. We have an EV interlock here with this lever. And you have to kind of pull this down to uh, turn the rings independently. But as you turn them, you can see these two arrows, or two, I guess, orange things moving in and out. And that's your depth of field scale. And that kind of shows you, uh, according to your focusing range, how much depth of field you have, or how much, what is going to be in focus between each range. It's a pretty interesting system. And on the front of the camera, we have this kind of bayonet mount thing here where you use to mount the original, uh, I guess, uh, Carl Zeiss lens hoods. Kind of like what they have on the older Canon FD lenses. And yeah, this has a synchro comport shutter, which is actually similar in design to the, I guess, the comport shutters uh, in Japan. But these ones which are, came in these lenses are really nice. Uh, one problem that I do have with some of these lenses is that they develop haze on the inside. And uh, fortunately, the haze is not difficult to remove in most cases. Uh, if it's a planar lens, you can remove uh, the front element of the lens to allow you to get inside for cleaning it. Just be careful that uh, 
when you're removing the lens that you don't like lose the detent for the uh, 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 I guess uh, shutter speed adjustment these have kind of like a spring detent kind of thing and uh, I found out the hard way what happens if you're not careful when you to take one apart uh, if you take like this 150 millimeter lens and these frequently have haze and fungus in them it unscrews very easily from the back and you can remove the entire lens group for cleaning on the inside and you can also remove the individual elements quite easily that's a wonderful thing about these old cameras. The optics are top quality, and if you are mechanically inclined, you can do most of the work on these lenses yourself. I haven't had much issue with these uh, having sticking shutters or things like that. The only issues they have are things like uh, haze and occasionally fungus. Uh, the last thing that uh, I will show you how to do in this camera is uh, how to load the film. So let's take a break for a moment, and then um, I'll, I'll come back and load the film. All right. So let's go ahead and load the film in the camera. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you need to make sure that you have the uh, uh, dark slide set in the camera because if the dark slide is not installed, you won't be able to remove the film back. Uh, to remove the film back, just push the lever like so and it pops off. I'll go ahead and move the camera out of the way. As I said before, you have to make sure that the slide is put on so this rolled up part is facing toward the front of the camera or this side. Uh, uh, a cartridge is going to rub against it as you pull it out. Uh, to remove the cartridge, lift up on this lever here and turn it leftwards and just slide it out like so. Uh, uh, you have to have a, a take up spool when you're shooting a medium format camera to uh, take up the roll film. Uh, this camera has the take up spool. I always include the take up spool in uh, medium format cameras I, I sell. Uh, you know that the take-up spool fits on this side because it has this knob here which you turn it. It only turns one way. The film goes on this side here where this arrow is located. So I have a, a roll of film in my pocket here or a roll of dummy film and I'm going to use th this to demonstrate how to load the camera. The first thing you're going to do is lift up this tab here with the arrow and then uh, put in the film spool or excuse me roll of film, film roll or whatever you want to call it. And you're going to put it in like uh, just like with the last video I did about the Mamiya RB67 because when you are rolling the film you want the black side of the paper facing outward. So if I'm looking at the film here uh, you can see that this has got white paint or white coloring on the paper and this is completely black. You want it like this so the black is coming out and facing this way. And simply pull it all the way around making sure that the black stuff is showing. And you're going to feed it into a slot here on the take-up spool. I'll go ahead and turn that so the slot is lined up. I've used this uh, roll a few times, this demonstration roll for other cameras, so kind of a little hard to put in. And just turn uh, the take-up spool. As I said before, it only turns one way. And as you turn it, as you can see, we have black paper all the way around, no film showing, or no, uh, I say no colors or color marks showing and simply turn this until this arrow starts to come out and as you turn it line up this white arrow with the red arrow located here on the front of the camera so once it's lined up you have to put the cartridge back inside the film back and once again you have to make sure that this uh, raised part is facing this way drop it in like so and that's it. Uh, the cartridge is loaded. Next thing we have to do is uh, get the camera ready. So go ahead and install it like so. I have to make sure that the, the camera is wound before advancing the film. So right now it is wound and the shutter and everything is cocked and ready for the next exposure. The next step is to go to this little handle here and simply turn it and keep turning it until it stops turning and when it stops turning the number one will be showing in the film counter window. So now this camera is cocked, it has film loaded in it and it's ready to go. Now if I were going to be uh, taking a photograph right now uh, the first thing I would do is uh, say uh, if I'm taking a picture of the National Art, Tokyo National Art Center behind me I'll go ahead and pop open the focusing loop and I will compose and focus the camera I'll, I'll set the aperture and shutter speeds and uh, say I, I want this is I guess a good
Yeah, this is a little bit annoying, kind of like the Hanukkahs. This lever here, this uh, EV interlock system, it's really good in some situations for uh, quickly changing the aperture without changing the actual exposure setting. But let's say uh, today we got sunlight shooting 400 speed film. Okay. Okay. So that's about the right setting. Take out the dark slide, like so. Put it in a safe place, don't lose it, because you, you need it. And then uh, take the photo like so. And then next exposure, simply wind it. This will wind up to number two. The wonderful thing about this camera, which makes it uh, superior to other cameras or medium format cameras, is that you're winding the camera mechanism here, it automatically winds the film back, which is something that uh, the Mamiya RB67 doesn't do and something that the Mamiya press cameras don't do. So a wonderful feature this camera has. And then, yeah, take another shot like so. Uh, when you're done shooting, uh, fold down the prism. Uh, put in the dark slide. Make sure that you feel the bump by putting this so the thumb is on the flat side here and your fingers are on the raised side and simply slide it in like so. And that's it. So anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Hasselblad 500CM camera. Uh, this camera is listed for sale right now at my uh, online store and my Etsy store. So if you'd like to have a closer look at it, uh, please visit one of my stores. I'll be making more videos, hopefully one or two more tomorrow uh, as it's Friday. I have a little bit more time before the weekend comes. Otherwise, um, I won't be able to make any till next week. If you'd like to see these videos and I have a bunch of more ideas coming up, uh, please come back and check or subscribe. If you like the video, please click the like button. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.